The framers of the Constitution spent five months and some days in Philadelphia, in the Pennsylvania Assembly Building. We know it as Independence Hall. Debating whether to form, and if so, how to form a national government. The Articles of Confederation were a failure. Because as a loose confederation, after the war, America couldn't pay its debt, couldn't raise an army to defend itself. States were putting up barriers to other states in terms of commerce. There was uh, taxation used as a weapon by one state against another. There was an effort at first to meet in Annapolis, Maryland. But the states didn't send enough delegates, or enough states didn't send delegates. And so it failed. But they decided that there would be another meeting. And this time the states were strongly urged to send delegates. And they did. What was this new government going to look like? What were they going to do? Well, the man who put the most concrete plan together before this Constitutional Convention was, in fact, James Madison. But there were others who gave this a lot of thought. Roger Sherman. Hamilton. Others. They're trying to balance different different philosophical issues and different experiences through human history. These men were well read. They knew about Athens and Rome. They saw what happened throughout Europe four or five hundred preceding years. They had read John Locke and Montesquieu and their contemporary Adam Smith and others, Edmund Burke. What should they do, and how would it get passed by by enough states? So they got together, representing different corners of the country, small country, nothing close to the geographic size today, these 13 states, with similar interests and disparate interests, with similar populations and different populations. And they duked it out. And they battled it out. And there were a lot of issues they had to put off, because to resolve them would have meant no union whatsoever. They fought hard over slavery. They tried to tackle the issue. And they understood they couldn't solve it there and then. But they did a few things in the Constitution to try and limit it. They limited the importation of slaves at a specific year. And they counted for the southern states, or states that had slavery, they counted their slaves as three-fifths of a vote for purposes of representation in the House. This was a proposal by the North, not because they thought slaves were three-fifths of a human being, but that they didn't think the South should be able to benefit on the one hand by choosing or treating slaves as people for purposes of bolstering their representation in the House, but on the other hand, treating these people as non-humans, non-people. But there are many more battles. This Congress they decided to create, bicameral, unicameral, what would it look like? There was a compromise. The House would be directly elected every two years, and then there'd be the Senate. Two senators from every state, despite the population of any state. 
and they would be chosen by the state legislatures, or the method in which they would be chosen would be determined by the state legislatures. They believe strongly the states should have a say in the federal Congress. They created the Electoral College, which in some ways is based on the popular vote, because they were trying to weigh a few things. They were trying to weigh both pure democracy and republicanism. So they came up with this idea of a Senate. But ultimately, they wanted states to have a lot of say. So the president couldn't appoint to what would be federal courts, which were not established in the Constitution other than the Supreme Court, without the okay of the Senate. Couldn't appoint ambassadors without the okay of the Senate, so they wanted states to have a say. The states weren't about to create a government that would swallow up the states and deny them decision-making that they felt belonged to the state legislatures. Article 1 dealt with this new Congress they created, and they laid out what this new Congress would have the power to do. Article 2 laid out the executive branch. There was a great deal of debate whether we should have a president, how that president should be selected, whether there should be a judicial council that's involved in the selection process, and on and on and on. 